Uh, welcome to Laguna Art Museum. Uh, this is going to be your virtual tour of Travels in Mexico, watercolors from the Diane and E. Jean Crane collection. And uh, I'm your hostess for the evening, Janet Blake, Curator of Historical Art, uh, also longtime curator for Mr. and Mrs. Crane. And um, this exhibition um, was conceived and designed by Tim Campbell who's our registrar and collections manager and also does work for Mr. Crane. Um, so we have in the exhibition um, a little over 20 paintings that sort of serve as a little travelogue of Mexico from the 30s to the 80s. Now, um, tourism in Mexico began to be in, in, encouraged especially, this is from 1930. Uh, this is the uh, Mexican consul to Los Angeles who had just been appointed, Senor Rafael de la Colina. And in this article that was in the Los Angeles Times, he says, citizens of the United States who contemplate travel in Mexico will be more than welcome here in the consulate. We will endeavor to help them in every way possible. The Mexican people and their government are genuinely anxious for cordial relations with the people of the United States. And if there's anything the consulate can do to promote that feeling, we're here to do it. So you can see that they're already encouraging travel. Here's an ad from 1935, all expense tours to Mexico, a 16 day cruise tour. You can go by rail, you can buy, go by rail and water, or you can go just by water. Um, notice it, it goes to Mexico City, Guadalajara, to Tosco and so forth. So you see these, you see these in, the, in the newspapers all the time. So needless to say, artists in California had been going to Mexico prior to this, but it really picked up in the, 19, in the 1930s. So these paintings are from uh, the collection of Diane and uh, Jean Crane. Um, it began to be formed in the 1960s, and it's, their collection has a very personal aspect to it in that they became close friends with several of the artists, most notably Rex Brandt, Phil Dyke, and Millard Sheets. Um, the focus in their collection is American scene, a period in the 1930s and 40s in California. But for artists like Brandt, Dyke, and Sheets, they have paintings that ex uh, expand over their entire career. Um, Mexico, of course, became uh, a magnet to draw artists to it. Um, especially because it was the closest kind of exotic locale and fairly easy to get to. Um, all of the works on, in the uh, exhibition are in watercolor. Um, the show is dominated, not unexpectedly, by Miller Sheets, who probably was one of the most prolific as far as uh, traveling throughout the world and in Mexico. But it includes works by Rex Brandt, Phil Dyke, Emil Cosa, Phil Paradise, and Milford Zorns. The layout of the exhibition as put together by Tim is kind of like a little travelogue. So we start off in this entry gallery, which is right off the elevator uh, up on the upper level, and we have rural Mexico. So in, in, this, in this image, you can see on the left um, a painting that's called Lower California, um, done by Miller Cheats in 1940, and it is Mexican laborers at, at, at work on the farm. And on the title wall is Windswept, which is from 1941. Here you can see it here adjacent to our, our entry didactic wall. And again, here's a more thorough image of, of Windswept. Um, although Sheets, Sheets documented most of what he saw without much social comment, he was not really a, 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 a social commentator in his work more just describing what he, what he could see. Um, both Lower California and, and Windswept are rather stark. Uh, they're very monochromatic, shades of brown and gray, and it kind of suggests the harshness of uh, rural life in Mexico. Um, interestingly, Sheets was represented by the Los Angeles dealer Dazelle Hatfield for um, many years, and Hatfield actually kept this particular painting in his private collection for some time before it was sold many years ago. Another painting in the, in the uh, opening area of the exhibition is Brassy Day. 
which is from 1939. Um, during this period, there were many watercolor competitions throughout the United States. And Miller Sheets especially encouraged uh, all his fellow artists in his little California group, members of the California Watercolor Society, to enter competitions when they could. And he entered this work in the uh, 41st annual Philadelphia Watercolor and Print Exhibition, which was held in 1943 at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts in Philadelphia. And he received the Dana Watercolor Medal for this piece. Now, unlike the two previous images, this work is um, a very brassy golden color. Um, the title probably alludes to the harsh, harshness of a hot summer day in Mexico. Now, rural scenes continue on down along the balcony, which is a little more difficult to photograph for this purpose. But there on the right that you can first see is an untitled scene um, from Mexico in 1937, which is more detailed here. You can see something that's kind of characteristic of some of the ways Sheets works, which is he's got horizontal layers in his composition as you slowly move back and up to the high horizon and the sky in the distance. Um, he, of course, favored horses. He, his grandfather had a horse ranch and he grew up on, on the horse ranch and so he always liked to see horses in his paintings. Um, here's another work. This is not in the show, but it's in the Crane Collection. It's called Mexican House from 1940 which is almost um, amusing because um, here this, this house is up against a very, very um, steep hillside. And uh, along the hillside are all these goats who are grazing along there are the on only thing that could graze there. It makes you think of the goats that we have on the hillsides in Laguna Beach who are keeping the, the grass mowed, shall we say. Here is a painting called Mexico 42. This is one of Jean Crane's favorite paintings by, by Millard Sheets. And it has a very characteristic compositional device, which is that, that um, white uh, tree branch that's literally framing the composition. So it's like it's cradling the horses that you see uh, gathered together there. And, um, uh, it's very stylized. You'll, you're going to see that kind of thing often in Sheets's works. In fact, that stylized tree branch, you can also see in, in this painting that we just showed you of uh, Mexico from 1937. So he, he, likes, he likes to use that, that um, design element. This is a panoramic view. This is not in the show, but it's in the Crane Collection. It's called Village on a Lonely Mesa, done in 1967. Um, at which time that, that he's starting to use extensive patterning. As you can see, he'll put on a wash and then he'll put pattern on the, on the painting that gives it a more of a, a solidity, kind of the weight of an oil painting. Here is a painting um, by Rex Brandt from 1969 called Sunlight San Miguel de la Ande. Um, Jean and Diane Crane went on a few uh, trips with Brandt and they went on one with Sheets as well and they were on this trip to San Miguel Allende uh, with Brandt in March 1969. And so we can use Jean's own words as he talks about this painting. I was fortunate to be a collector and close friend of Rex Brandt and able to learn his philosophy of painting and what he loved best, sunshine and light. My favorite work, Sunlight San Miguel Allende, is a quintessential example of Brandt's work in transparent watercolor. It incorporates all the elements that he felt to be key, translucency, spontaneity, and perhaps most important, the use of the white paper. Quickly rendered on location while teaching a painting workshop, Brandt communicates the sense of place and time with a minimal application of paint. A splash of color at the center of the composition conveys, conveys the brilliance of sunshine reflected off the stark white of the buildings. It is indeed a tour de force. And in fact, this painting, which was uh, on display uh, continuously in Jean's law offices for many years, was a favorite of visitors and a special favorite of fellow artists who would come to, to see it. 
here is an advertisement of a tour that's being organized by the California Tourist Bureau. And this is in 1940. And it promotes a tour that's going to include visits to Mexico City, Pazcuaro, Yanitzio, Toluco, and Tosco. So you can see there's still, the, the tourism is still being heavily promoted. And here is Early Evening Tosco by Rex Brandt. Uh, Tosco was a silver mining town and it was a favorite of Brandt. Uh, in this painting, I think you could see a rather unusual composition. Maybe he is, it's a view from the window in his hotel. It just seems to be that, that kind of view. And here is Memory of Tosco from 1967. Um, here is a, a, a semi-abstracted memory of the town. And again, it's illuminated by that brilliant sun element in the upper center. Uh, that is um, Brandt's favorite, favorite thing to interpret in his painting. Sheets was especially drawn to uh, historic sites in Mexico, and one of them was Guamas. Uh, Guamas dates back to over 2,000 years. Um, it's uh, a, a, against the Sea of Cortez, a fishing community, a uh, mountain nearby called the Tetakawi Mountain. And um, this is called the Variety Store, if you can imagine. Uh, we certainly have variety stores around here, but this is a variety store in Guamas in 1937. A very interesting uh, composition because we have the store way up close in the foreground. We can kind of peek in through the door and see a little bit of what's going inside. And then we look down the roadway on the right toward the village in the distance, and then in the far distance are the, um, the quintessential Miller Sheets Hills. Uh, this painting was exhibited, uh, not exhibited, uh, pardon me, it was um, reproduced, this painting was reproduced in um, Scribner's Magazine American Painters series in April 1937. Here's another work done by Sheets. Uh, though not in the show, but in the Crane Collection. This is um, Alamos, Mexico, done in 1940. Alamos, which is in Sonora, is called the Colonial Gen of the Sierra Madre. Um, again, we have a tiered composition that, like I showed you before, the foreground is in deep shadow. There's a sunlit street and a hillside beyond. And then on the right, uh, inside the uh, home, is an ola which is the, the pot that's used to haul water. Here's a work by Phil Paradise, and here's some of those uh, men hauling, hauling water. This is called Casita Vieta. And uh, Casita, of course, is just a small guest house, perhaps on the grounds of a larger estate. Um, we're not, you know, uh, Paradise, Paradise did extensive traveling after World War II, especially to Mexico and Central America. So in some cases, unless he specifically tells us with marks on the painting, we don't know for sure if we're looking at a scene in Mexico or a scene in Guatemala. But nevertheless, it certainly has the flavor of Mexico and the men hauling water, which they probably may have hauled and then brought into the, the home in Alamos. And there it is sitting on the shelf. Phil Dyke, um, who was a close friend of Miller Sheets and uh, uh, also a friend of, of the Cranes until the end of his life, um, went to Tosco in, in early 1930s. And these quickly rendered little paintings, uh, typical of how he painted in the early 1930s, capture the essence of the marketplace in Tosco. So this one here and then another one which is a little bit removed from the marketplace and shows the men uh, sitting in groups uh, on the benches under the trees, probably getting some shade. Here is Market Pazcuaro by Miller Sheets from 1948. Um, Pazcuaro, um, which is located to a, to a lake, located nearby a lake that bears its name, um, is 
still very much a colonial looking town um, and is filled with stores and vendors that sell a variety of crafts, um, many in bright colors. It almost appears that what we see hanging here are some of the fishing nets that are used by the, um, the men in the village. But many things were brought into the marketplace. Um, Sheets, in this painting, Sheets is using his watercolor medium in a very, very opaque um, fashion. He has diluted it with very little water. Um, it almost looks like it's tempera, but it is watercolor medium, just not diluted very much. Here is another painting by Paradise. Again, we're not sure exactly um, where this is, it, it, it's Maharachi Players, it's called La Fonda from 1989. Um, the interesting thing about Phil Paradise is that um, he had stopped painting uh, later in life and then the uh, art dealer, the late David Starry Sheets, who was Millard Sheets' um, second son, um, met Phil who was living in a retirement community and he encouraged Phil to start painting again. So it's very likely that this painting is based on a sketch from something that Phil had made earlier because it's, it's dated 19, 1989. Um, so there are, there are many paintings like this that date from the 80s and early 90s um, that um, Paradise probably did based on these sketchbooks. Now down at the end of the gallery, we have th three paintings that relate to uh, churches and cathedrals that you see in, in Mexico. So here in this image on the left is an old Mexican church by Sheets done around 1950. Uh, the middle piece is by Cosa and the far right piece is by Milford Zorns. So here's a closer view of the Milford Zorns Cathedral de Mexico, done in 1956. This is Emil Cosa's painting, Guanajuato, which was done around 1950. Now it's interesting to try and figure out exactly what we're looking at with this painting because um, Leon in Guanajuato has numerous cathedrals and churches and um, some of which are in ruins. But this appears to be, I think, this cathedral, which is the Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady of the Light, um, also simply called Leon Cathedral. And it's in the historic center of the town. So uh, it's possible that that's what, I mean, when you look at the towers depicted here, that's what it could be. But it is, like I said, difficult to discern that, and COSA did not indicate exactly um, which, which cathedral we were looking at in this painting. Here's another cathedral. This is a close up of an entranceway by Milford Zorns. Uh, Zorns, who was, uh, he, he lived to be uh, 100 years old from 1908 to 2008, um, very prolific artist. And he, though he's a, in the same generation as Miller Sheets, he was actually one of Sheets's pupils um, at, uh, at um, Pomona College. And so he came to painting a little bit later. But this is a very simple composition done in 1985 um, of an entryway to a cathedral. It's again, we don't know exactly where it is. Uh, perhaps one of the most important paintings of this nature that's in the Crane Collection, although not in this current exhibition, is uh, Night of the Dead Mexico from 1982. This is one of Miller Sheets's um, mature works, one of the most important works of his, of his career. Um, this is the island of Yanitzio, which is up the hill from Lake Pazcuaro. And there's this picturesque old church in the background. And the people that are sitting in the cemetery with all the candles lit 
are celebrating the um, festival uh, Day of the Dead that runs from October 31st to November 2nd. So, you know, All Hallows Eve is October 31st, which is Night of the Dead. Um, in the background, you can see all these lights that are coming from the candles and they're um, creating a pathway for the ancestors to come back from the dead and everyone is bringing offerings um, to, to their dead ancestors. You can see them in the baskets the, at the, on the ground by the way the women are, are seated. So then as we get to the end of the gallery, we're going to end our tour along the seashores. And so on the right, we've got Mexican sunset with boat, boats in 1985. In 1985, Millard Sheets began doing a whole series of sunset paintings. Um, uh, some, many of them were done along the Northern California coastline where he was living at the time. But this one is from Mexico. And then on the left is uh, La Teta de la Cabra, literally the teat of the goat, which is um, this mountain in um, Sonora, as you can see. Here's, here's a detailed view of the painting. And this is from 1938. And then here's what this mountain looks like. It's not a very tall mountain. It's just barely a thousand feet. Um, <clears throat> And uh, Milford Zorns also painted along the shorelines in Mexico. This one is from Las Rompiolas, which means from the breakers, from 1981. Here is Phil Paradise's 1951 painting called Topolo Bampo. It's a port on the Gulf of California. He painted it around 1951. And um, it, um, it connects uh, through a car ferry to La Paz and Baja. So it's an, an international trade corridor. And here is a photograph of, of that, it's a more contemporary photograph of the shoreline there along that Gulf. Again, after World War II, um, Phil Paradise, who'd been a pretty much traditional American scene painter, began painting these much more colorful, stylized paintings. And like I said, he did so much traveling throughout Mexico and Central America. Here's another remarkable painting of Wamas by Millard Sheets called Big Fish Wamas from 1965. Uh, very stylized, a mural-like painting. It's, 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 you can see it's got all kinds of little vignettes. You've got the big fish in the foreground that you can see beneath the sea. Um, you've got the giant swarrow cactus along the hillside. There's a seabird that's diving into the sea. Some kind of interesting structure in the distance. It's kind of hard to tell what exactly it is. And um, it's a very bold kind of uh, painting that's typical of, of Sheets once uh, his mature style came along in the 1960s. And finally, we're going to end our presentation with an, another painting that un, unfortunately is not on view, but it's one to, to consider as being celebratory of Mexico. And this is Miller Cheat Surf Riders Mazatlan, done in 1968. And um, these surf riders are just galloping along in the surf on their horses. Um, in the distance, it's almost like a serpent-like cloud pattern that's going along uh, in the distance. And uh, again, he's using this stippling overlay of dotting pattern on his paintings, which is typical uh, characteristic of his work from that, from that era and beyond. Uh, so um, we'll end back where we began, and I'm hoping that maybe um, all of you will be able to come and see this show because although the show closes on um, May 25th, um, which is its scheduled closing, since of course everybody is closed right now because of this horrible virus, we are actually going to extend the show. So this show will be on view in the museum in its present configuration through September 20th. So hopefully, 
Um, even though we'll probably still be practicing kind of social distancing within the museum, you'll be able to come and, and see this exhibition. And uh, so thank you very much.